Okay, today we're gonna to talk about screws. And what I want you to realize is a screw is really just an application of an inclined plane. Now you remember when we're dealing with inclined planes, we have a input distance. That is the distance an object is traveled or pushed along this hypotenuse of our ramp or the slope of the ramp. And then the output distance is the vertical distance which an object moves up along that rail. Now there's lots of different types of inclined planes and wedges. They both work in functionally the same way. A good example would actually be a staircase. All right, so in the situation of a staircase, uh, and you can actually argue that a staircase isn't technically an inclined plane because something isn't moving perfectly along this hypotenuse, it's moving up, then over, then up, then over. Uh, but most people think of a staircase as being an inclined plane. And the reason I want to talk about a staircase as being an inclined plane is because imagine we didn't have a staircase that's a nice straight line, but imagine a spiral staircase. On something like a, a spiral staircase, it's really just acting a, like a ramp, much like a regular staircase. It's just that that ramp or that inclined plane is wrapped around a central axis. Uh, there's still some input distance, that's the total distance which you'd actually walk, uh, but the output distance is still just the vertical displacement upward. Now I want you to realize a screw is really nothing other than an inclined plane wrapped around a central axis, just like a spiral staircase. So to get a better handle on screws, let's, let's take a look at a screw. So in looking at a screw, uh, there's a, a screw or a bolt head, and then there's these threads. Uh, the threads are really just a ramp that has been wrapped around a central axis, just like a spiral staircase. Now, rather than having little people try to walk up this screw, which I've turned on its side, uh, what we do is we turn a screw and it is then driven into some base material, like a nut or a bolt or a cylinder head or whatever it is we're trying to, to bolt into. Uh, so there's a few things we need to talk about with screws as far as vocabulary and nomenclature to talk about with a screw is something called the pitch of the screw. Okay, so we have a bolt uh, and there's a couple different dimensions that we care about with this. There's the pitch. And this is the distance from one thread to another. Or if you go back to our spiral staircase, this is really the distance traveled vertically on our spiral staircase if we were to walk around it once. Going back to a screw, if we were to turn the screw or bolt around one time, it would move into a base material, a distance equal to one pitch. Uh, now we've got some other dimensions here. There's something called the minor diameter and the major diameters. Uh, these don't really play into how a, a bolt is used as a simple machine, but these are just different ways to differentiate one bolt or screw from another. Then of course we have the length, and that really is just telling us how far into some base material this, this bolt can extend. Now, there are different types of bolts. We have metric bolts, and then we have standard bolts. And the metric bolts, they're, they're pretty easy to deal with. Uh, when you look at a metric bolt, you'll see something like this, M8 by one. And what this is telling us is the major diameter and the pitch. Uh, the pitch being how far this is going to turn, in, or how far this is going to move into a base material if we turn this bolt around once. Uh, realize both of these values are in millimeters, which keeps things nice and easy and convenient for us. Then we have American units, uh, which are a little bit more of a pain, uh, because if you look at a bolt, go down to your, your local hardware store, what you'll find is something like a number 10-32 bolt or screw. And what this is, is telling us about the major diameter, but it doesn't use actual dimensions. It just uses a, a scale, kind of like gauges almost. Uh, and this is a major diameter of 3 16 for a number 10 bolt. If you were to have a number eight bolt, that'd be something a little bit different for the major diameter. Then there's 32 right here. This, this isn't pitch. Um, 32 as a pitch would be ridiculous. That would be something like one thread every 32 inches, which would be functionally worthless. Um, what this is, is the threads per inch or TPI. 
And all that really means is this is one over the pitch, or it's the inverse of the pitch. Um, but again, when we keep, you know, American units, <laughs> they're American units. It just keeps you confused. What can I say? Uh, so let's actually take a look at a bolt as a simple machine here. Okay, what I want to do in this problem is, is take a wrench and put it on a bolt and run this bolt into some base material. This could be whatever it is you want. This is a, a screw going into a door frame or a bolt holding on some little piece of your bicycle. I, I don't know. I'll let you choose this scenario here. Uh, but what I want to do is, is look at this bolt with the wrench together as a simple machine. Because really a bolt on its own is not a, a simple machine. We have to turn it and we use a wrench to do that. So the dimensions of this wrench will actually come into play. So what we're going to do here is look at this wrench as having some length. Uh, and because American units are silly, let's go through and let's just look at this in metric units. Let's say this is a 0.15 meter long wrench. It's about six inches. Uh, and let's say the pitch of this bolt or the thread pitch, kind of like what we see over here, let's make this one millimeter. That is 0 0.001 meters. Okay, so what we're gonna solve for in this problem then is the IMA or the ideal mechanical advantage of the system. Now you remember IMA is D in over D out. Uh, and ultimately what's happening is we're turning this wrench. So we're gonna have to move this thing in a long ways. This wrench is gonna move a long ways in a circle due to some force we're gonna to apply to it. So we're gonna put some force tangent to this wrench. It's gonna cause it to move in a circle. As a result, this bolt is going to move downward into this base material. Now, the input distance, we could just keep turning this wrench over and over and over and over and over again. We could turn this around hundreds of times if we wanted, depending on the length of the bolt. So coming up with an input distance seems a little bit strange at first, but I want you to realize, let's just look at turning this wrench around one single time. And we know if we turn this wrench around one single time, the end of the wrench or where we're applying this force is going to travel one circumference around this circle. And we know circumference is two pi r. So let's treat the input distance from one single revolution as just being two pi r. So that means we're going to have the circumference. That's the input distance. Now, the distance which this bolt travels into the base material, going back over here, is going to be the pitch. Remember, a bolt will travel into a base material one pitch in length for every revolution. So the circumference over the pitch is simply going to be the IMA of this simple machine. So the ideal mechanical advantage of a bolt, in this case with these numbers, is going to be two times pi times 0.15 over the pitch of 0 0.001. Uh, now this works out to be 940. That's an enormous IMA. Uh, what this means is if we were to put a force on this of 10 Newtons, uh, realize that's roughly two and a half pounds. Looking at this, this AMA, now assuming this was 100% efficient, this means the AMA being F out over F in, if this was 100% efficient, we would have an output force over 2.5. Uh, in this case, the output force works out to be an enormous 2350 pounds. So by pushing with just two and a half pounds of force on the end of this wrench, we're able to create a huge clamping force between this bolt and this base material. Um, now in reality, um, a screw and a bolt, it's not 100% efficient. Uh, so we might only get a fraction of this, but even still putting in just a few pounds to get hundreds or thousands of pounds of, of clamping force out of this, makes this an extremely useful, simple machine. So in summation, we should see that a, a screw or a bolt is really nothing other than an inclined plane. Uh, it's important that we understand the vocabulary, especially understand what a pitch is for a screw or a bolt. And I want you to realize when looking at a screw or a bolt as a simple machine, we really need to take into account a, a wrench or a lever that's acting on the screw or machine. Uh, 
The IMA for a screw or a bolt, it's always gonna be really high. It's, it's really large. This is why we use screws and bolts. In reality, the IMA uh, is never gonna be the same as the AMA, and that's because a screw and a bolt isn't particularly efficient. Uh, there's quite a bit of friction between these threads and a base material, but still we get enormous forces for relatively small input forces. And on that note, that's all for now.